아저씨, 제가 공을 뺄까요? 아니, 아니, 너 지금 뭐해? Hello, 안녕하세요. I'm Sean the Rage. Welcome to Cinema Radio, where we only talk about South Korean movies and dramas. I've known about Goblin or Sulsuragu Chalashin Tokebi for a long time. I'm a major, major fan of Train to Busan, where Kong Hyo played the lead, so it was only a matter of time for me to watch this show. And yes, I'm gonna keep calling it Goblin, because Guardian, the Lonely and the Great God is just way too long. The show stars Kong Hyo as the Goblin, Kim Go Win as the Goblin's Bride, Lee Dong Wook as a Grim Reaper, I saw him in Strangers from Hell, he was good there, he's so much better here, my god, he's so much better. Yoo Win Na as a restaurant owner, let's just say that and Yoo Jung Se as the goblin's nephew. Hong Yoo plays an immortal goblin who used to be a Korea warrior 900 years ago. He was framed as a traitor by the king and he was killed by the sword the king gave him. Years later, he's resurrected by a deity as punishment for killing countless people. He's destined to see everyone die around him and the sword still in his chest and only his bride will be able to pull it out. If she does, the goblin can finally die and rest in peace. Where do I even start? It's such a simple story and yet it's so complex, it's so well written, well acted and it's so hard to talk about without spoilers. Where do I even start? I guess the story needs a little further explanation. As the story settles in the 2000s we see Kong Yu saving a woman's life after a car accident. Oh yeah, he also has these weird superpowers. And since the woman is not begging for her life but for her yet unborn daughter, he decides to save her. Little does he know that the unborn daughter will become his bride, a soul that should have never been born. Then the show jumps ahead 19 years and the young girl and the goblin finally meet, almost by accident. But honestly, in this show, nothing really happens by accident. Or does it? Overall, Goblin is a romantic drama which is definitely not up my alley, but thankfully it's so much more than that. And the way the romance is done here is so appropriate, so let's start with that. The thing that I really appreciated about the romance here was the futile nature of it. Kim go character is destined to pull the sword out from Kong Yu's chest. If she doesn't, she'll be in trouble. So imagine falling in love with someone, for the goblin is the first time ever in his life and he's 939 years old. And just when you finally love someone with all your heart, you have to die. That fucking sucks. But it makes for a great story. In fact, I was wondering about the goblin's punishment a lot. At first I was like, hmm, so he became immortal. He's got all these powers. It doesn't really seem like punishment to me. But then I realized that watching all your loved ones die and then falling in love and most likely not being able to spend time with the one you love, that is real punishment. I wouldn't want that. But back to the romance. As far as I know, the show was a bit controversial because Kim Go-in portrays a 19-year-old girl and Kong Yu is supposed to be in his mid-30s. Actually, he's 900 years old, but whatever. Now, this might be a little bit controversial in certain parts of the world, but not where I live. Years ago, I had a girlfriend and her older sister was my classmate. When she was 18, she got together with a guy who was 29 years old at the time. And they're still together after 17 years. They have two beautiful children now and all is well. So this topic might be controversial in Korea, but not here. But the great thing about the Roman series is that it's quiet and comfortable for both of them, which prevents their relationship from getting overly cheesy. For the most part, they're being very careful around each other. They're taking baby steps, you know, it's not like, I just see 사랑해요. 나도 사랑해. 우리 키스해요. Oh yeah. It's much more subtle than that. The romance here kind of reminded me of the romance in Mr. Sunshine and I very much prefer it this way. Honestly, at first I thought they befriended each other way too quick until I realized how uncomfortable it is for them. It takes a lot of time for them to truly give in to their feelings and I thought it was very well done. And like I said, there's this underlying sense of futility which makes the whole thing a lot more interesting and potentially heartbreaking. I also love the world building in the show. According to Goblin, there are deities in this world, there are Grim Reapers in this world, there are ghosts in this world who can let go of the pain of their past lives. I love this kind of stuff, the Grim Reapers especially. They reminded me of the show Black, which I also really enjoyed, but Goblin is even better. Hong Yu's performance in the show was just... Have you seen Train to Busan? If you have, you know how awesome he was in that movie. Now imagine him playing a very, very written, very rounded character for 16 episodes. The man is an acting genius and I loved his character here. He's very deep and very thoughtful, but at the same time he's very immature and very childish. Which really bugged me at first, I mean, come on, the guy is 900 years old. But then I realized that he's never experienced romantic love in his life. This is something very new for him, and he really doesn't know how to handle the situation. Which was really funny a lot of times, and it made me realize that no matter how old we are, there are always gonna be new things for us in life. Hopefully good one. Kim Gomez's character, Tian Tak, was also very, very written and incredibly active. Since she's only 19, she has the traits of a teenager, but because of her troubled past, she also has a very mature side to her, and I thought it was very well balanced. She was really cute, lovable, beautiful, and really wise sometimes, which I really appreciated. And then there's Yi Tong Gu. 
Like I said, I saw him in Stranger somehow, but his character here is so much deeper and more complex. He plays a Grim Reaper, and since the Goblin likes to meddle with human life sometimes, he makes Edom Goose's job a little hard sometimes. At first I thought they were gonna be enemies, but they end up living in the same house. It's not a house, it's a f***ing mansion. And their relationship was an absolute highlight for me. I love all of their scenes together, either they're really funny or really sad, but they're always amazing. And seeing them slowly become friends with each other was truly heartwarming, especially when you learn more about them, which I'm not gonna spoil. But what was really surprising about Lee dong was that he also had a pretty serious arc in the show. In fact, if the show shifted its focus on him instead of Kong Yu, we would still have a really good story. It was great. Yu Ina was really good in the show too, but her character would be very hard to describe without spoilers. So if you're a fan of the show, please understand that I don't want to ruin other people's experience. All you need to know is that she was equally just as good as the other leads. Also, Goblin looks gorgeous. I mean, the show, not Kong Yu. Don't get mad at me, girls. It's beautifully shot. The locations are beautiful. The imagery is beautiful. Even some of the special effects look great. And a lot of them suck. But you can't have it all. Also, as the story goes on, you realize that there's a lot more to this story than you might have thought, so it gets more and more interesting. And a lot more emotional. And then there are fan service moments in the show. For example, in episode 7, the Goblin and his bride go to the cinema to watch Train to Busan. I could not believe it. I was fanboying like a little kid. And then a few episodes later, her character goes to a shaman. She describes the goblin to the shaman, asking who that might be, and then the shaman replies, Hmm, Kong Yu? I laugh my ass off. Oh yeah, let's not forget that goblin isn't just romantic and tragic, it's also really funny. I love the humor in the show, especially in episode 5. That episode put a huge smile on my face, it just made me feel so much better. If you're feeling down, goblin might be a great solution. But goblin also raises some very interesting questions, for example, is there a redemption for you if you've committed something wrong? And if there is, until when do you have to pay for your sins? Is it possible to forgive someone who's done something wrong? I mean, really wrong. And is it possible to forgive yourself? Great questions. With that said, there are flaws in the show I cannot ignore. For example, the goblin has all these superpowers and they are pretty random. Certain parts of it are defined, but if you start thinking about it, well, you better stop because it might give you a mild headache. Also, Kim byung Chal is in the show. I really like him. He was great in Mr. Sunshine and Sky Castle, and I was okay with him for a while. He played someone who lived 900 years ago, but then the show does some things with him, and I really didn't like it. Not his performance, the arc of his character. But my biggest problem is, and I guess this is a very mild spoiler, although I won't say anything concrete, is that after episode 13, there's a time jump. I hate time jumps, they break the flow of the story, such was the case here. And honestly, episode 14 and 15 were my least favorite, they were pretty much anticlimactic and I was a bit angry actually. Thankfully the second half of the last episode was great, but still I was a little disappointed. Actually I wanted to rate this show at 85% because of that, but then I thought about it and I enjoyed it overall so much that I'm gonna give Goblin 90%. It's not perfect, there are things that you have to just accept, but the characters are so good, their chemistry is so strong, the humor is just so good. The whole thing is just so interesting. The romance is just so appropriate. I'm gonna miss this show a lot. And hopefully one day I'll be able to watch it again. I would say if you like romantic stories, this is a must. But if you like good stories with good characters, go for this one. See you very soon.